Hey, how is it going? Quick video today. I want to make a video troubleshooting the BMS unit that we have. This is a BMS for our little uh, PCB based battery building system, right? The PCB system. Uh, these uh, just became available fully populated. So now you'll be able to get all the boards fully populated. Uh, but I have a few customers that have had a few issues with these, uh, getting them to work. And so today I'm going to show you just quick tips, how to quickly check to see what is wrong. You know, right? Um, I guess there's a, there's a possibility that you can get a bad one because these are cheap Chinese electronics, right? And so nothing's 100%. So there's sometimes bad ones, but because there's three of them, the likelihood of all three of these units being bad, well, it's kind of low, right? And so more likely than not is something something else. So let's, let's see how we can uh, rule out everything else and eventually get to the point where like, oh, it's it's the units that are bad, right? Okay, so here is the battery pack, right? Uh, you have them loaded. All the batteries are facing the right way. How do you check that everything is fine on this? Well, there is one way. I used to offer this. This is a, uh, what's it called? It's a uh, state of charge meter. That is a state of charge meter and the way it works, oh man, this is this is not gonna work. Uh, I can't test it because this this thing is backwards. The connector there, because um, this is a really old one. I don't longer offer this because it was plagued with, with a lot of problems uh, in many ways, right? Even if we populated, then we had a lot of trouble getting. I think there's a lot of these uh, chips that that are old and uh, they're defective, so. Uh, you, they have a lot of pins, so once you put them in there, there's a pain to try to get them out. It's not worth it. We're spending too much time for this little piece uh, of tech that it, it, it was a good idea at the time because you could put it here and then you have three little levels that would show you the, you know, the state of charge of each independent uh, group of cells, right? And so I think I've discontinued this because you, there's something in the market that you can get that does the same thing and it actually does more for the same price. So the only problem with this one is that it's not available. It's often sold out and stuff. So I'm gonna try and get with the company and maybe I can carry them myself so that I can keep stock and then we can sell them. But this is great. If you don't have one, look for these. It's an ISDT, uh, BATGO BG-8S. We'll put a link uh, in the description of this video so you can get it. But this is a great, then you'll have to make this little cable you can get these on Amazon and then you'd have to solder it like this into uh, the ribbon cable that I have here. Well, what it does is that when you plug it in there, then it shows you each individual cell level, one through seven, right? So here, you know, they're, they're not 100%, um, they're not, you know, 100% equal but they're they're pretty balanced it's okay it's good enough right so here you go here's your your bms right so if the bms uh doesn't work right so let's say that you can get power out um there are several things that it, it can be it could be these fuses right that maybe they're blown so you got to check these fuses. Then there's also all the trace fuses here. If any of these ones are blown, then that means that these BMSs will see a zero in any of the seven groups of cells. And if it sees zero, that means that there's something wrong with one group. So these will not turn on, right? So first, it's got to be connected. I've, I've actually had customers send me a picture. I go, hey, this, this thing doesn't work. You know what the problem is. They, and then I go, send me a picture. They send me a picture and they don't, it doesn't have a ribbon. I go, well, it won't work without the ribbon. Put the ribbon in there. Oh yeah, that's what it was. So first things you have with the ribbon, the fuses have to be on. These fuses have to be on, right? And if that doesn't work, then yeah, you might have something wrong with these guys, right? Um, but then, uh, also, there might be something wrong with all of these fuses. So all your battery modules have to have all 
the trace fuse is also intact because if they don't, then uh, one of these groups is gonna show zero, right? So just because these fuses are good, you know, you have to check all of them. All of them have to be good. But let's say that that is the case. You connect it in here. Oh yeah, so then to check it, right? Use a multimeter. Um, by the way, uh, before I say that, you use a multimeter and you can set it on voltage, right? Where's the voltage here? Here we go. You put it on DC voltage and then to check the unprotected side of the battery is right here at the posts, right? 28.6 volts, right? Okay. So then what you can do to see if there's power going into the BMS is you put your positive here on the positive pad and then you put the other probe on the B negative of each individual uh, things. 28.6, 28.6, and where's the other one? 28.6, right? So then you put it on the C negative pad and look at that, it's 26. Look at that, it's 26, 28. 26 26 okay so if we put it over here there we go come on come on come on yeah it's the same thing 26 right so what does that mean does that mean that these this doesn't work because it's not connected and they're still on no not really this these have uh even though they are off they have a thing that is called a leakage, right? So even though the switches are off, they're still letting a little bit of uh, voltage leak through. And that's what your very sensitive multimeter is picking up. But if you were to put any sort of uh, load in here, like a real load, then it will very quickly uh, drain those down to zero and you won't, you'll know that these are off, right? So don't test them just with these if you see a difference in voltage that usually means these are off right if you connect these then let's check it again now the bms should have turned on and let's see yeah 28.6 right so now it matches the voltage going into the bms's right here's another way you can test um you put this guy Yeah, let me see. You put this guy to, yeah, to measure ohms, right? And then what you do is you check here. Okay, so this is letting power go through. This is power letting go through. Then if we disconnect it. Okay, here we go. Nothing, right? So these BMSs are off right now, right? And as soon as you connect this, there we go, they turn on, right? So let's say that these are indeed on though, right? You do all this stuff and you're like, no, it's got voltage here and you put a load and it works, even though these, this is disconnected. So they should be off, but they're on. So then the, that means that one of these BMSs is, is bad. And so the way you isolate which one is bad is by disconnecting these, right? Uh, in this case, I guess um, to check if they're not turning all on is you disconnect these. But if they're on, what you'll have to do is you have to cut the individual uh, hardwire connections, right? So you cut all of them, all three of them, and then you connect one and then you test that. And if it's still connected, even though it's, then that one's bad, and then you connect the other one. And if that one is on, even though everything's disconnected, then that one's also bad, right? But the likeliness of all of them being bad, I think it's very low. You're gonna maybe every once in a while, you're gonna get one bad and then the other two that are good. And then what you do is you just remove that one from the thing, you order another one online and replace it, and then you should be good. Now, if they're not turning on, right? And everything is checking out, here's one quick way to know that everything is good. You need to know that these are receiving the voltage that they need. They need to be getting feedback from the actual uh, battery uh, groups, right? And so you put this on voltage, DC voltage, and you see these little pads right here. There's like these little pads in here. 
those could serve their bias, but they, they can serve as points to test, right? So you put it on number one, you put negative on number one, positive on number two, and you should get voltage over there. It says four point, uh, what is it? Let's put it in here. There we go, 4.08, right? So that's the voltage of cell group number one. So then if you move that to pin number three or bias number three there, then it's 8.15. That's the voltage of the two number, uh, so number one and number two cells. And then as you move further along, then you add the voltage of the third group, the fourth group, 16 volts there, 20 volts on then here's the fifth, sixth group is 24, and then finally seven, should be around 28.6. There you go. If you don't have that in here, right, on the board, on the BMS board, that means that something is wrong in your uh, in your ribbon cables, right? So maybe those connectors are not crimped correctly. There's something wrong. Maybe it's cut or maybe all the, the fuses, the, the trace fuses are blown or maybe one of them is blown and you don't know and you can't see it. But, but there's some reason the power from all the uh, the signal from all the f seven groups is not coming into this and so that might be why these are not turning on right so i hope this is helpful for you guys that are building these uh if you indeed find that one of these is bad do let us know if you order it from us uh i will send you another one right because i kind of stand behind these even though these are cheap chinese electronics it's not my fault when they fail but it doesn't matter because i want you guys to buy something from me and be able to use it right and so uh if you do have some trouble follow these simple steps to kind of well this is to eliminate every other thing right because there's many points and aspects that could go wrong here but if you indeed find out that it is one of these bad units then yeah take it off i'll send you another one uh, send me an email, jhojack35, and then we'll send you another unit, and then we'll get you on your way to uh, building these little battery systems that you guys have put together. What can you build with these? Well, you can build all kinds of things. Here's one unit that was recently built by uh, someone here that is that is helping us, right? This, this guy doesn't know anything about batteries. He just follows simple instructions how to put it together, and it took him a couple hours, and he built this pack right here, right? So he's using the HP version. Here's the BMS. He did all the wiring himself. He, he did make a couple of mistakes there and burned a couple of things. But then, you know, then uh, the second time, then that's how you learn, right? And what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out, uh, test how much power we're going to get out of there at the USB, right? And so it's taking forever because this is quite a bit of a big battery. Uh, other than that, you can build all kinds of stuff including these uh ammo cases that i'm uh, building i will put these together as kits and then you'll be able to order them and then uh ultimately we'll go to something like this these are big power walls that i'm building i have another two of these that are being built at, at, at the moment uh and we'll put them here and this is going to be about a 20 kilowatt hour uh battery diy power wall that is going to power this building uh when it's uh, peak time, right? When it's, yeah, so when the energy is the most expensive, the power is gonna come from here and not from the grid. And then at night, when we have super peak, uh, super off peak times, then I'm gonna charge these batteries from that. Uh, but there we go. That's just a quick little video showing you some quick tips on how to do these things, all right? Hope this was helpful. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.